Coming up on this episode. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? This thing is just for ready to go. Um, the only thing we have to go over is this. So you see at the bottom, it's got this little fold. Yeah. And if you look in here, you just line it up with that fold, and then it kind of fills in this void, right? Like that. Is that it, eh? That's it. So it's almost like a coffee filter type thing. We were just driving along and saw these really lovely sunflowers. I just had to stop. Driving today and just to give you an idea of where we are, this is a sign on the side of the road. <laughs> so, that's where we are. Big, huge sky. Ah, uh, you know, we've owned this island for less than five months, but it really is starting to feel like home to us. All the cares of the world seem to melt away as soon as we climb into our little boat and start making our way to our cabin site. To give you a little perspective, we're traveling along the east shore towards Berry Point. We named it Berry Point because it's full of wonderful Saskatoon berries. From there, we will turn up along the southern shore as we make our way to the site of our future dock, which is just steps from where we are building our tiny cabin. We've just arrived back from our trip to Montreal. All in all, our trip was a success. We are now plus one beautifully restored antique wood stove. Oh yeah, and minus one front tooth. We have family in the US that we haven't seen since the pandemic restrictions were put in place. So after we button up things here for the winter, we plan on heading down there to enjoy the warmer climate. It's so peaceful here. This really is remote wilderness living in northern BC, Canada. So we've just gotten off the boat and we're checking out the cabin because we've been gone for a little while. Here it is. It looks great. It's going to be getting A roof and the sheds look good everything looks really nice everything's locked up our Adirondacks are sitting over there our fire pan oh we left the lights out there and our Canadian flag is up still look at that Look at how, look at the shore there. I know. It's a full on shore and it was just water all summer. That's unreal. Let's see what we got up here. Everything looks good. We haven't been in the cabin yet. There's the bird bath. Here's our little cabin. Yeah. Aww. Just the way we left it. Just the way we left it. Even the clock's still running. <laughs> Aww, this is really great. This is really, really great. And I think, where is the stove gonna sit? Right there, eh? The beds are still, aren't they? Yours is still good. Is it? Yeah. We're taking a hike this morning and we've just come into a place where we've never ever been on the island and wow, it's um, 
got lots of fall leaves and colors and but it's whoa uh, <laughs> well I found lots of rose hips and some other little berries that I'm gonna look in my book and see what it might be this is a beautiful time of year and um, we were just trying to see what might be a good spot for my boys to build one day. For my girls, I mean, I'm really hoping something like that will happen. But we found a really beautiful spot. We're just trying, we're gonna go back and look at our archives, our footage and see how much is covered in water because right now it's a very, very low point water-wise. And um, yeah, very, very low. So we'll see. I got all bundled up because I thought it was gonna be really cold, but I did not, turns out I didn't actually need it. She's loving it. So heading back for breakfast, that was an early morning walk. Each year the lake recedes quite significantly. Here you can get an idea of how many extra acres of land we can actually enjoy in the summer and autumn months. It allows us to get out and stretch our legs in the mornings without having to trudge through the forest. Oh, it's neat to see the cabin peeking through the forest at the shore. It's amazing. Just a few weeks ago there was nothing there. If the cabin looks haphazardly wrapped up, it's because it is. We were in a big time hurry to close in the cabin before we left last time. In fact, we didn't even expect to be back here. Now that we are, we'll take our time to button the cabin up properly. Whatever is behind there, we all know, is our beautiful special stove that we bought in an auction this summer. This is what it used to look like. Yep. This little stove needs a bath. Ryan is going to be installing it in the cabin. That area is 14 feet tall, so he'll actually be putting it into the sidewall. Shane's work has far exceeded anything that I could have dreamt of, so it's kind of exciting. I tell you something, this never gets old. This little stove is a real beauty. Each piece is carefully restored. And he showed us how to mount all of these lovely pieces onto the stove. I just hope it will function as good as it looks. We have a little ash box for the bottom. How am I going to do that? I guess what I can do is get a block and set it on a block. And while it's hanging, put the legs on. Yeah. Reassembling this little oven turned out to be a very simple job. Even though there's no product manual, we have pictures to refer to to help us put the right pieces in the right place. I hope the piping, fittings, and exterior work go as smoothly as the initial assembly did. Isn't that beautiful? 
That's it's amazing. like the queen. It's like the queen of stoves. How regal. It's sure coming together. That black piece on the wall is a heat shield. It has a one inch air gap that prevents the wall from actually burning. For such a small little stove, this thing sure throws out the heat. Look at this, a perfect mirror image. What would you think if I told you this picture is actually upside down? It's our first fire. Ryan's just finished putting up all the pipe. Goes to the outside. And of course we have a good deal of ventilation here. <laughs> We're gonna start our very, very first fire. So we have to open the damper. And we've gone and gotten some sticks. And we have some paper and we have fire starter wand. So here goes. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? And then you can see out of tiny little windows there, it's a lovely glow. Oh my goodness. Let's turn off the light and see if there's a lovely glow. Honey, you did an amazing job with the pipe. It's just temporary, sweetheart. Those are good pieces of wood. That's probably all we'll need all night. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be unbelievable. But we're supposed to be out for a while just because the paint has to burn, burn off and stuff. You can totally hear it crackling. <laughs> that thing it probably hasn't burned for a hundred years. Maybe fifty years. I don't know if you remember seeing us in a previous episode, but what we have had to use out here in the wilderness for bathroom facilities was less than optimal. Have you ever? His and hers? Everything you can imagine, right there. See Sherry? Good times. We thought it might be kind of fun to put a little bit of a spin on the outhouse by the cabin. Just because we're out in the wilderness, it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be a nice place to visit. We will do our best to make it as comfortable and efficient as possible. Well, the time has finally come for us to install a solution that we are both really happy with. It is important to us to keep our island as clean as possible, and we really prefer to limit any bio-waste contamination if we can help it. We decided to research an incinerator toilet. It wasn't an easy decision because it is a bit pricey, but in the end, we feel it will be worth it. So we purchased an electric Cinderella incinerator toilet, and we are interested to see how it will work for us. We don't ever want to find ourselves solely reliant on fuel. Being so remote doesn't afford us many options for power. The most sustainable solution for us is to take advantage of the sun. 
we have a custom solar system going in, which will provide us with unlimited power. In a later video, I'll be sharing the entire process of how our solar system was designed, purchased, and installed. Given our location, the plan I have for the bird bath might seem a little unconventional. My wife really wants something special and nice. Actually, she wants a soaker tub that overlooks the lake. And one day, we hope to be able to make that a reality. For the time being, every time we use the bird bath, we'll have to put the generator on. Sure, it might be a bit inconvenient to start with, but it sure beats the alternative. And once we get the solar system installed, the operation of this bird bath and the incinerator toilet will be peaceful and quiet. I'm not normally in a bathroom this long, but I'm working on something. Okay, we want that kind of tight like that. Okay. And then just as up and down as you can. Just kind of fold it there. It doesn't take any effort. Just push it with your knee or something. Okay. Will do. So we've just finished installing the toilet into the bird bath and so now I'm going to do a little bench tree thing that we can put into the bathroom so that we have a place for towels and we can sit and get dressed. There's a place for shoes. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing this little project on my own because I like to build things too and I like to help. I'm just not as good as he is. <laughs> So I've got instructions, but who needs instructions? I'm putting this thing together just on my own intuition. Okay, so I know that this is just a kit that you put together, but I really do love doing this kind of thing. I used to build stuff with my dad. My dad was a full on wood builder and he got me a tool belt. My, my dad didn't get me this, but I love it. It's pretty. So, now that I have my tool belt, I have all my tools, I get to work. So today, I'm going to build something. He always gets to build everything. There's a reason for that. He's a lot better builder than I am. I'm not. <laughs> You're a good builder, honey. Okay, let's just face it. We all know that this is a kit in a box thing, but it's still kind of fun putting things together. And I used to do stuff with my dad all the time. He would take me to his work site sometimes. He was a, a full-on bonafide builder. And he did some wonderful work and I used to love working with him. He got me my very first tool belt. It was a brown leather one. I graduated to this here, this. And I'm loving it. 
so I have two of them now. I have a, a paler pink and this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to start with my instructions. Oh. You know where they are? No. Do they get tossed? Well, I did toss them, but now I need to look at them. Okay. I tossed them over there just a minute ago, which is weird, so I thought maybe you picked it up by. Oh. Yeah. It's weird. I just tossed it. And I thought you maybe picked it up just to clean me no. up. <laughs> what? I was just being silly and I tossed it. Uh oh, where's Opal? She's right there. Does she have your instructions? Did she take them? Yes. Are they she ripped tore up? them up. No way. She tore them to bits. Oh no, are you kidding? No. Um. <laughs> So, you know the instructions that I just showed you that I threw away? I was actually going to go and pick them up again when you weren't looking so that I so that I just looked like I knew what I was doing. But when I threw them away, Opal decided not to throw them away. And she did this. Did you see that happening in the background and you didn't even tell me? Oh, no. Oh. Okay, so I don't think they're usable. Are you sure? Well, she's being incredibly destructive and I just don't understand why. She has freedom to just do anything, but you can't trust her here, honey. Okay. Look at, she's got something right now. Waffle, where's my screwdriver? is a bit of a mischief maker, but overall, she is a very sweet doggy. Swallowed a bug. You just swallowed a bug? Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. What was that like? Wasn't as good as our lunch. <laughs> I actually did that. Where was it? Down at the boat launch? Coughed. Oh, when we were packing that night, when it was really, really late. Yeah. Oh. And I breathed in and it coughed and choked, but I don't. Oh, Paul. What is it that you have there? You know, I don't trust her. So you hear the generator in the background. There is the toilet. Ryan put in a special plug just for the toilet because this is an incinerator toilet. There's our water. It's just temporary though, sweetie. This is just temporary, he says. Um, yeah, no, he's just being extra careful there. Um, we're going to redo that. This is, there's a corner shower there, you can't really see it. But this is all off the grid. I think it's pretty fantastic. And I'll show you more when it's done. 
Alright, so this thing's just already gold. Um, the only thing we have to go over is this. So you see at the bottom it's got this little fold. Yeah. And if you look in here, you just line it up with that fold, and then it kind of fills in this void, right? Like that. Is that it, eh? That's it. So it's almost like a coffee filter type thing. Yeah. And, and it has a special wax cover or something, doesn't it? Yeah. And then this thing goes inside it like that, you see? I see, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I have to go read the instructions because there's a test firing I got to do. And I want to do that just to make sure she's all, look at that, it said lid is open. Now it says ready for use. And look at this. See the lid is open? Yeah. Now it won't work. Just a minute. It won't work if the lid is open. No, it won't fire. Oh, I see. And why is that? Because it shouldn't be firing when the lid is open. Exactly. Is it dangerous? Right. So after you after you do your business, you close the lid and you hit that button. But we're going to read the instructions and we're going to give it a test. We're going to see how it works. Here's the plug I put in for the electrical and that connects to a generator or solar or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. In this case right now it's connected to generator. This plug here backs on to the other plug. So the bolts come through the, the one on the other side of the wall and here. So they're perfectly mated mm -hmm. and that way it won't tear the wall out. This down here is makeup air, it's combustion air, right? So when the incinerator is working it's drawing its air from there. And then here's the vent and all the gases and stuff go out here. There isn't any odor to that at all. Odor free. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please support us by clicking the thumbs up icon on YouTube. We invite you to also subscribe and click the bell. You'll be notified when we upload new content. Please invite your friends and family to come along too. Bye for now.